What's up, guys? Your boy is back. And uh, I'm still recovering from the newborn phase at the moment, and I'm enjoying it every second of it. But um, let's jump on in today. We're going to go ahead and do a guide today. The Alolan Raichu. Um, shout out to Ninth Gym uh, for beating me to this. Uh, but I will give my own perspective on this Pokemon, and there's always plenty of guides you can go to check out. But... Um, I assure you to check out mine. It's going to be good. Anyways, so Alolan Raichu. Um, some things to say about it. It's fairly um, linear. Um, and what I mean in that sense is you kind of have to build around it. Um, you can't so much build... You know, you can't just throw this into any piece, like puzzle. You know what I mean? Like, it's a very specific piece that requires specific things to... Um, basically exploit the things it's good at. Um, so as we see Raichu's stats here, um, not obviously the speed is great, an amazing speed tier. Um, and then when you plop that on top of his ability surge surfer, doubling its speed on electric terrain, you have you're not getting outsped by anything naturally, right? Um, without maybe an unburdened boost, but I don't even think there's an unburdened Pokemon that can outspeed Raichu on electric terrain. Uh, but, special attack stat's not incredible, but it's not bad either. Um, there's a few things you can do to make up for that, mainly the two attacks, Expanding Force and Rising Voltage. So, Expanding Force on Psychic terrain doubles the power of the move. Um, also hits both targets, and Rising Voltage does the same thing except it's only a single target move so it also doubles the power so you're now looking at like what is an 80 base power move for expanding force going to 160 and rising voltage going to 140 um, not to mention you're also getting terrain boost um, your stab boost as well which is same type attack bonus for both of those moves because it's electric and psychic so those two moves will hit like a truck so obviously, two pairings for this Pokemon you'll see are Pincurchin and and Indeedee. And the reason that is is if you don't know, they're the two terrain setters for the terrains you want to abuse with Raichu. Now, a lot of times you think, well, of course you want to start with Pincurchin because you get your double speed, right? Well, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, from my experience, I tend to like leading with Indeedee better because you can you you don't have to actually dynamax um depending on what they bring to make the raichu work really well there because you have the follow me option so you can actually give your raichu protection because it's actually very frail um and with sucker punch being a move uh being able to one shot raichu very easily with cinderace everywhere um being the main one to use sucker punch but you know you run into like a grim snarl or a bisharp with a sucker punch that will that'll give you a bad day right there um so that's the main move to look out for when using a lowland raichu um especially if you lead with pincurchin because it will just ruin your day um you think oh i'm faster but then they slap out a priority uh Sucker punch and one shot you, and it's no fun. Let me tell you, I had to learn that the hard way. I, I almost forgot like that was a thing until I was like, "Wow, he is actually his dark is super effective against him." So that's what makes him uh, not the best necessarily in in that scenario. So that's why I think leading in DD helps exploit the power a little bit better, and then um, also you kind of have to run the pin curtain, right? Um, which you don't necessarily have to. But um, it's kind of nice to, to run it. But um, basically, you don't really ever want to use the move static. I mean, or ability static, I'm sorry. Um, you always want to use the Surge Surfer ability. It's the prime ability to use. But we'll go ahead and take a look at the weaknesses and resistances. As you see, there is a times two to dark, which is bad for, you know, the fact that Sucker Punch is a thing. <clears throat> and it's kind of huge like you don't run into a cinderace that doesn't run sucker punch um you kind of have to run it um bug weakness is not a big thing really but it is a thing um ghost weakness is kind of common you see a lot of ghosts uh dragapult mainly being one that can outspeed you pretty well um and then we have the ground weakness which is times two which 
isn't as common either, right? Um, and most of those are easy to avoid except for the priority move, Sucker Punch. So you're pretty safe as long as you know your opponent doesn't have that. You can kind of lead with Pincurchin pretty safely for the most part. Um, the thing that is bad is Ndidi is also weak to dark moves, but Ndidi can also avoid a Sucker Punch given that it's going to just click follow me. So you have that. Um, now I want to say one thing about Raichu, Alolan Raichu specifically, obviously, because they are way two different Pokemon, let me tell you. Um, Raichu does not have an incredible amount of coverage. Uh, you pretty much only have um, lightning, or let me say electric moves, and psychic moves for the most part, um, with the exception of like Hyper Beam and Grass Knot. Um, that's pretty much the only things you really have. Um, I want to go over some move sets here to help you exploit this Pokemon a little better. Um, the Life Orb here, um, you can actually replace that with a Focus Sash um, if you're wanting to lead with Pinkurchin more, um, which is not a bad idea, honestly. Uh, but I like the Life Orb because it gives you that little extra oomph to kind of just take out some things you can't normally take out. And your speed tier here, you're always going to be outspeeding everything as long as you lead with Pinkurchin or switch into Pinkurchin, um, turn one and get the boost. So, which is actually a thing because you can actually scare people with follow me and they'll want to change up their plans and you can actually just swap out and, you know, mess with their mind a little bit. So, with the Life Orb version, I go, you're always running Expanding Force Rising Voltage on this Pokemon because this is what makes him good is he can exploit both of them and get the stab bonus on both. So that is like the damage output is insane. Um, let's look at rising volt or expanding force 1.5. You on psychic training, it's 1.5 power. Um, and then rising voltage, where's that at? Why is that not coming up? Let's go down and look at it. What in the world? Let's let's take it. there it is, and it's times two power if the target is grounded in electric terrain. So you, your target has to be grounded. You can't actually get that on a flying or levitate Pokemon. You can still hit them, but it won't get the two times power. I actually didn't even realize that until just now. So look, your boy's learning in his own video with you guys. So that's actually a huge thing to know. And it's also only single target. Um, a lot of people don't realize that. They think, oh, it's just an expanding force version of for electric, but it's not. Um, so this is the Life Orb version, and I carry the Hyper Beam as well, just to give it a like a move to hit like a truck, you know, as a final hurrah against someone, you know. Or even in max mode, you can, uh, you know, max strike and drop speed tiers, and if they kill your DD, you can bring in, um, I don't know, if you have like a Cinderace, you can bring it in, and it's going to be above all speed tiers or pretty much whatever you hit. Obviously, Dragapult not being able to drop speed tiers very easily because of the clear body ability, but... So this is a pretty basic set. Um, there's not a lot to say about it. I mean, the spreads are very easy. You always you don't want to give it an HP spread in the Life Orb set because you want to have an odd amount of HP with Life Orb, so you're actually taking less damage from it, technically. Um, but we'll go ahead and look at my other set I have, which isn't going to be much different. This is a Choice Spec set. And uh, you could even go Choice Scarf, really, if you wanted. But uh, I kind of think the damage... Like, this really makes Raichu hit like a truck, right? Like, now you're getting a 1.5 boost from your choice specs. Um, let's say you're on electric ter 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 terrain with rising voltage, right? So now you're getting the two times power boost. So now you're at a 140 base power. Then you get a 1.5 from choice specs and a 1.5 from your stab, giving you another... This is a 280 power move hitting. It's huge. Like, it's hitting that hard. Like, it's it's kind of ridiculous. Oh, and not to mention, you're getting the terrain boost as well. So, uh, that's like over 300 power with Rising Voltage. And it goes the same for Expanding Force. The same thing works. It's the same ideal, except it's a little less. And it's also hitting double targets, so the damage won't quite be as direct because it's spreading the damage out between two targets. But... If you have one uh, opponent, you know, one Pokemon left on their team, then it is hitting them for full damage. 
Um, and I opted for volt switch on this set, obviously, because if you in a leading position you don't like, you can hit them with a pretty hard volt switch, um, getting the choice specs, stab boost, and maybe even the terrain boost, and uh, get out of there so you're not locked into your volt switch, obviously. And uh, you can just get on out of there and uh, bring in the appropriate threat. Um, and then I just have Grass Knot on here because that's the only other coverage move <coughs> that's really usable for a choice specs user. Like, you don't really want Hyper Beam on a choice specs user. I, I mean, I guess you could run Hyper Beam still. So, really, that's player preference. I don't prefer to run Hyper Beam and get locked into a turn, you know? Like, I'm locked just sitting there, and they know that. But, so that's my... Uh, over there, same spread except I gave the four HP um, since we're our choice specs and or choice scarf set. So that is my review, guys, on a Lowland Raichu. Like I said, um, if you're trying to use this Pokemon, I absolutely you have to run DD female, or you might can even work out a team that uses the male version. The point is, you need the psychic terrain. Absolutely have to have terrain. Um, the electric terrain isn't as um, important considering you can max it and uh, max lightning and set your own terrain with Ndidi there. Um, let Ndidi take a hit, then set your terrain, then double your speed. There's that option as well. Um, but I hope you guys um, learned something from this video. I even learned something from the video. I learned that rising voltage is only two times power against a grounded opponent. I did not know that. Um, not that it matters if they're flying, it's hitting double damage already anyway but thank you guys for watching also look out for sucker punch guys you don't want to get it with sucker punch i have to say that again always think about the sucker punch because it will ruin your day with this pokemon i'm telling you look out for it abuse it's just absurd move rising voltage and expanding force um thank you guys for watching uh i will be doing some more guides soon once i do some battle videos and think of the next pokemon that I want to review and obviously as you guys know this is a doubles format review um, I don't review things for singles because I'm not well versed in singles yet um, stay tuned for the draft league it will be coming up in a week or at least my draft I'll be revealing my draft in a week and then the next um, battle will be the next week after that but thank you guys as always please hit that subscribe button please like please comment God bless and peace